I just presented my work on melatonin and how it might impact in the seasonality and the occurrence of multiple sclerosis relapses. We were looking into the occurrence of relapses and so we were, we were seeing a seasonal pattern and but we couldn't explain it only by vitamin D levels. Vitamin D levels are well known to be associated low levels with high risk of MS relapses, even for risk of developing the disease. Uh, but when we try to match our vitamin D levels with the occurrence of relapses in terms of the seasonality, we were finding quite the opposite. So we couldn't explain exactly what was going on because we were seeing more relapses during spring and summer, like the majority of studies does. And obviously you have more levels of vitamin D in that uh, because you are more exposed to the sun and and on overall, so we couldn't, uh, our main hypothesis was that vitamin D level was somehow involved, but then didn't make sense. So we started looking for additional factors that could explain the, that pattern we were seeing. We started measuring melatonin because we knew melatonin uh, had higher levels during fall and winter, which we were seeing low levels of relapses. Um, and then since we found the correlation in, the, in, in MS patients, we, we studied 139 patients from Buenos Aires. Uh, we decided to go into the model and see, animal model, and see if we could find any effect on melatonin in the neuroinflammation. What we found is that uh, melatonin uh, was very helpful for the, the animal model and also in vitro studies because it was uh, basically blocking the, the generation of uh, a subset of T-cells known as TH17 cells, which we know there's a lot of evidence that they are one of the key players in MS pathogenesis. Uh, and on the other hand, it was nurturing and uh, helping to develop uh, regulatory cells called Tier 1 cells that secrete a lot of IL-10, which is a, a quite an immunomodulatory cytokine. So for those me two mechanisms, melatonin w was helping uh, to the mice, the animal model, and we believe also uh, it might be helpful for MS patients. We would say uh, like a 50% reduction in, in terms of the, in the animal model, of course. It's a different story talking about uh, um, humans and patients, and that's something that it's very important to, to stress that, that it's been on, that our data is in vitro in animal models, and we have some observations in patients, but in order to translate that to a valid drug or <coughs> as a treatment for MS, we are still a few years uh, before we can talk about as a treatment for MS. The, the pina gland, which is the one secreting melatonin, is connected by some fibers to the to the eyes. So if you're more, if you are exposed to the sun or lightning you block the secretion of melatonin and it, it, you have higher secretion when there's darkness. That's why their secretion it tends to be higher during fall and winter because days are shorter, there's more darkness and, and they, take to, they tend to go down during spring and summer where days are uh, larger. And, but there's a lot of also variation because if you are working you know, with your computer at night, you suppress melatonin, so there's a lot of things going on. Um, and also other conditions might affect melatonin levels. So I think it's, um, it's interesting and we're just beginning to understand and build how this might contribute or not to MS. We are planning to start a small pilot trial to see, to f first we need to find out um, the, the dose we're going to give the patients, how is it going to be, if we're going to use melatonin, if we're going to use another drugs. There are some other drugs related to melatonin that might have some other potential benefits. So we're, we're working on, on, that, on that area and we're also trying to see if um, melatonin also has an impact in the MS risk. So far all the um, environmental factors associated with MS such as vitamin D, Epstein-Barr infection and smoking have shown an association with the disease curse and, and also with the risk. So we, we show that melatonin has an impact in the occurrence of relapses. We need to establish if it's also true for the mass risk.